In this video, I'm going to show you how to complete a simple men's haircut. This is really basic barbering and we're starting right away with a number two on the clipper. For this first fundamental technique, I'll start with the clipper guard at the base of the neck and glide up past the bit of bone that sticks out the most on the back of the head. That's known as the occipital ridge. So the clipper goes in straight up to the occipital ridge and then carry on through. This is what that would look like on a head if there was no hair on it. So we get to the occipital ridge and just carry on gliding up from there. I'm going to use that technique all the way across this big section at the back. So right across there, same technique, just glide up. And this is really going to reduce the scissor work that we have to do later on. Because I'm going straight up and passing through all that weight with the clipper, it means I don't have to deal with it with the scissors later on. This clipper I'm using, the T-Pop Goblin, has a 110,000 RPM motor, which makes it very easy to do through all this thick hair. Over on the side, when the back of that clipper guard reaches the ridge, just glide off as if you're heading for the ceiling. This really is such fundamental barbering. It's a really simple skill. It does take a little bit just to get used to it, but it's very simple. It's almost as if you're just going up the wall with a set of clippers. Just that straight of a line. Try not to curve out back towards yourself with a clipper in a scooping motion. That's something you would do more if you were tapering hair. Once you get around the back of the ear, let's go around to the other side and there's that ridge again. So just work up to the ridge and then just glide straight off. Really, I can't emphasize how easy that is. I did mention this clipper earlier. This clipper is making my life very easy here. It's just gliding through the hair like a hot knife through butter. It has a hybrid fade taper blade, but the main thing is the blade is able to accept a lot of hair very easily. Now, what I want to do now is I'm going to crisscross below the ridge. So this is just going to clean up my clipper work and it's going to pick up any hair that's going in different directions other than straight up. Now you must keep this crisscrossing below the ridge. So I'll work my way all the way around. Try not to go above the ridge into the heavy stuff. Over at the temple, I'm just going to use a little bit of trimmer over comb. So I don't want to go too heavy and define this in a big way. So I'm going to put my comb in vertically and just tilt it out a little bit so that by the time I get to the ear, there isn't any hair sticking out and just glide up the comb. This softens that area around the front of the face and around the ear so that you don't have a solid line on the sideburn. Use the corner to go around the ear and on the back of the ear, use the corner. And then what I like to do is I like to get down to the base of the neck in a straight line from the curvature of the ear. So make my line first. And then once I've made my line, I'll remove all the neck hair that I don't want. The other stuff that you see further down, don't worry about that because I'm going to get rid, rid of that in just a minute once I've tidied up the other side. So at the back, I'm just going to go in and pull this out with the comb here and trim across the comb. Now, a good idea is to take the teeth all the way down just to the very hairline so the teeth are on the hairline. I don't want the comb to be bent out or laying flat on the head because if you have it like that, you're going to get the wrong angle and it won't be very nice. You might end up making it look like they've had some kind of operation and you're going to have to work on it much longer. So just tilt the comb out to about 45 degrees and then work over it. I like to spend quite a bit of time on this. Don't worry about the, the hair further down below the gown. We can get all that later. Once you've tidied up that area, make sure you brush off any cut hair and don't miss anything at all. On the top, we need to establish a root map, a way to cut the top of the hair. So I'm going to make myself a guideline in the middle. Um, I've got a section of hair and I'm going to lift it all up so that I've got a visible guide that I can use to work my way from the back to the front. So if I pick up all that hair and I decide how much hair I want to take off. I'm happy with that and I can cut across there. 
The next bit of hair, if I pick that up, I can still see a little bit of the hair that I just cut. So I know that I'm at the right length and I can carry on cutting my way forward from there. And it's the same again, as I keep going forward, I've got short hair, that lets me know that I'm at the right length. So I carry on cutting my way forward to the front. Grab that last section at the front. This is quite heavy here, I've got a lot of hair here and you'll see what happens at the front in just a minute or two because of that. But now I can comb it all forward. I've got that guideline down the middle so I can pick up the hair working my way forward and I'll always have that little short point to see in the middle. So using the hook of the comb, drag across, pinch with your fingers and lift the hair up. Now I can see there, there is some little short hairs in amongst the long hair. That means I now know, because I've got my little guide in there, that all this hair I've taken across the top of the head is at the length that I want to cut it at. Let's take a step forward now, use the hook of the comb again. And the hook's good, these combs have got like a little half tooth and then a hook at the front. And I actually got this from Quartered Steels. There's my little short point. And Quartered Steels, by the way, that's the, uh, the brand of scissors that I use and that's what I'm using here. They are master precision scissors. There's my short point and I keep working my way forward. So these master precision scissors, they're made with 440C steel, and that's the same steel that is used for things like ball bearings. It's a very hard steel, uh, very good scissor this. Keep working my way forward. And now, I did say to you that I had quite a thick section at the front, so look what happens as I start getting to the front. I've got quite a big hole in the middle. That's totally fine. Um, but as I work my way forward, there's less and less hair coming off from the middle. Um, no big deal. But this scissor, yeah, it's very light to work with and um, I will leave links down below for everything that I'm using in this video today. Once you've got to the front, you've covered that whole section at the front. Now we can step to the side and do a section at the side. So I'm picking this hair up and I can see that there's a little short hair there from the middle and I've got long hair. So I can just work my way forward with these sections now using the hook of this comb again and cutting away the long hair and just keep stepping forward. Now it is important that you don't take too much hair in the comb. One of the problems you might have when you're cutting hair is that you get scissor marks or your cut is uneven. And the, and the number one culprit for that is that you have too much hair in the comb or too big of a section. You don't really want more than the teeth of the comb can handle. So if you feel like you're trying to cut through huge amounts of hair, just try and take a smaller section, a cleaner section. I am going to show you a method in this haircut uh, at the end for how to get rid of scissor marks. It's called cross checking. And it's something that I learned watching Vidal Sassoon when I was first starting as a barber. It's a way to even up your haircut and um, to check over for mistakes because this is a handmade item and it's not perfection, it never is. So you need to go through and look for any mistakes that you can. So I'm working my way all the way to the front now and I'm just gonna trim off this last little bit and then I'll show you how to blend the side in. So we've got the side here. I'm gonna use the hook of the comb again and just pull straight up and pinch in the fingers and I'll bend the hair out so that my fingers are straight. So they're just going straight up towards the ceiling. Remember what we did with the clipper? So the fingers are going straight up as well, okay? There's short hair either side of the fingers, that's my guide. And I can keep working my way forward like that. So pick the hair up using the hook of the comb. And you'll notice that what I did a moment ago was I, after I pick up a section, I pick it up and then I pushed the rest of the hair forward that was in the way. So I had a nice clean section. So work your way all the way towards the front. Now this is actually a little bit rough and there's a, there's gonna be a cross-checking skill. 
is not the cross checking that I'm going to show you at the end. Uh, this is it here. So this is what we call scissor over comb. And you want to get your thumb moving. Try and keep the top, the bottom blade still. Keep the thumb moving and keep it in line with the spine of the comb. So work your way up and you only want a small amount, like what I would call dust, like tiny amounts coming off. The main thing is keep the scissor and the comb moving in unison upwards and little amounts should come off. And what we're doing here is we're just shaping it. We're almost doing the job of a clipper as if you had a really long clipper guard, but this is a little bit more freehand. The main thing is you keep the scissor moving because what you might get if you don't, if you just make small, just individual bites at the hair is you will get scissor marks. Um, so if you're getting that, then try getting your scissor moving fast as you move. Once we've done that, we can go over to the other side, do exactly the same as we did. Remember, we had the section in the middle, then the section at the side. So just work your way right through. I'm going to do this quite quick and then blend all in from the back to the front. Over on the crown, we're going to take sections that look a little bit like half of an umbrella. So we'll pull the sections out straight. So from the middle, put the comb in and then bend the fingers out straight. It's pretty much what we did in the sides and we're just following our way all the way around the back of the crown. But make sure that that section is going straight up the way. So get a section in your hand and then work your way around. I'm working methodically all the way around. So start at one side and then I work my way around to the other side. There's quite a lot coming off from the crown here, but don't worry about that. That's totally okay. This is the haircut starting to come together now. We have the crown and we have the fringe to complete. Um, now, both of them use this sort of umbrella shape section that I just showed you, uh, but the way that you pick it up on the fringe is different and that's very, very important. So I, sh I did show you scissor over comb and it's the same on the back. Once you've taken all that weight out, you can then scissor over comb this um, and polish it. If you didn't reduce the length of your sections first, then it would be much more difficult to scissor over comb the weight out. Right, so on the front, remember I said we would take that umbrella type section. So imagine a point in the middle and what we're going to do is lift sections up. But rather than tilt the fingers out straight, let's have them horizontal this time. So rather than vertical, when I tilted it, so my hand was vertical going up towards the ceiling. Now it's basically flat on the top of the head. So I pick up the section and I lift my fingers, my fingertips up a little bit. This is taking all the weight out of the fringe. This is a great way if you have a very heavy fringe to take weight out is to pick up these sections going across the fringe like this and then take hair off from behind the longest point. Now, so here is an incredible tip for you. If you pull the fringe down and you put your knuckle on the bridge of the nose and cut across, then when you release it, the fringe should be sitting about eyebrow height. And that is such a handy tip. So knuckle or fingers on the bridge of the nose. And because this is slightly wavy hair, slightly curly hair, when it's dry, it will recoil a little bit. So I have enough length that is slightly longer than the eyebrow. But when I release it and dry it, it's going to sit up a bit and it should sit just around a bit of the eyebrow for me. So there's a great guide, the bridge of the nose and the knuckle. Now this is cross checking. Remember we took sections sideways across the top of the head. Now we're taking them from the back to the front and looking for any little imperfections on the haircut. Any long parts you find may be causing scissor marks. It's especially true on straight hair. Right, let me dry this off. And once I've got it dried off, I'm going to tell you without realizing that my microphone's not working about the haircut. And that's the reason I've had to do a voiceover for the whole video. However, I hope you've enjoyed the video and found some useful information in here. I'll be back again soon with another video. But until next time, good luck with your short back and sides haircuts.